When boxing legend Bob Fitzsimmons quipped, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, he nary could have imagined today's steady parade of authority figures, icons, and world leaders felled by scandal and corruption. From sports legends to heads of state, spiritual leaders to captains of industry, pop culture legends to Hollywood royalty. For the past generation, authority figures seem as likely to be cast in bronze as placed in handcuffs. When exactly did entitlement trump accountability? And do the right thing give way to don't get caught? In a moment, meet the whistleblower whose four-year struggle saved taxpayers some $300 million on one of Canada's most iconic destinations. This legal expert will explain how corruption works at the highest levels and ways it can be stopped. Then meet a family whose story demonstrates how international corruption becomes everybody's problem. This is Context, a look at life beyond the headlines. High-level corruption has given birth to a new human species, the whistleblower. Bob Gale is a Niagara Falls area business owner who became a Niagara Parks commissioner, and that's when he exposed irregularities involving the famous Made of the Mist tour boats. For that, he endured criticism, abuse, and years of bureaucratic wrangling. Bob Gale, the whistleblower, welcome to Context. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for being here. Thanks. Thanks. You know, the entire Watergate scandal began to be uncovered by a security guard who found duct tape on a latch, a door latch. When did you know something was seriously wrong at the Niagara Parks? When I got a phone call, they tried to rush the process too much. So tell us about the deal. What was going wrong? Okay, well, I was put on the Niagara Parks Commission because I, I helped Niagara Falls to get an emergency room because I, I, I'm pretty well bull. And I, if, I, if it's not common sense, I fight it. Uh, the boat was supposed to be signed in the fall of 2009. This is an iconic boat. It's been there since I've been a kid. Like, yeah, uh, since 71, this guy's had the same contract. Longer than Niagara Parks. The park's been there since 1885. Okay. And uh, uh, we, we didn't have the meetings for due diligence on the lease. And the lease is for many millions of dollars. They were rushing it through. In April of 2008, we were supposed to have a meeting before the vote on the lease and there were so many clauses in the lease that so didn't. How, how do you cut blow it. the whistle on it then? If you get this gut feeling that something's wrong, this is a non compete lease that's going to get rushed through, millions of dollars are going missing. You, you really saved the Niagara Parks $300 million. How do you oh. blow a whistle? It was orchestrated the, uh, uh, with some friends. I couldn't tell them what happened in the meetings. But I resigned from some positions on the Niagara Parks. I knew it would be covered in the press. Why did Bob Gale resign as marketing and events manager and, the, and uh, commissioner and things like this? And it, it was just a ripple effect. The problem was everywhere I turned, they shut me down. And I uh, went to the Ministry of Tourism, went to the Integrity Commission, went to the OPP Anti-Racket Squad, <gasps> went everywhere, and they kept shutting me down. What did you stand to lose by doing this? Uh, I'm an oil business in Niagara Falls. You have so gas stations. I have gas stations and we deliver fuel. Made of the Mist was one of our biggest accounts. I'm the only one that took a hit on this whole thing. I lost the Made of the Mist. I, I don't blame them because I cost them a lot of money. And they lost the tender when it came out fair. The people of the province of Ontario made an extra 300 million, so they say whether it's 1 million or 300 million, it doesn't matter. It wasn't fair. But it, it, it broke loose. It was a big deal. Um, and if it hadn't been the press covering your story, like yeah. you say, and it was you had the to go big press. Yeah, so here it's, it's shocking to me that all the levels of corruption we had to face. The local press didn't help you, you needed national press. Uh, the Globe Mail came through for me when other people bailed. Okay, so at the end of the day, what difference has it made? And are you, are you glad you did it? Uh, I'm glad I did it. I was right. Uh, my friends. I, I thank God for my friends and my family are proud of me. I did the right thing. It's easy. It was an easy thing to do. It was, and that, and what, like I said, whether it was 300 million or not, it doesn't matter. But it's changing back to the old ways. I find now they've got. They used to have a board of appointed people. Whether they cared or not, they were appointed people. If you're a good conservative, good liberal, good uh, whatever, you're on the board. I was a good nothing. They put me on there because I asked questions, and maybe I asked too many. And in this case, I probably did. But they were right. But. Uh, it's so it, it's I think it's going back. Okay, 
because the parks is, this is the public well-being for, for tourists going there, will the people notice a difference from you having blown the whistle? I think they will notice a difference when the money starts rolling in with the new lease coming on. The new uh, people take over next January, I believe it is. Horn and blower. that horn blower does. And they're going to be giving $10 million a year that never went into parks you before. And the parks, when I left, was losing 3 to $4 million a year. Are you shocked that corruption came so close to your backyard? Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, I exposed something there. I'm hoping that the tendering will be more fair down the way. I'm hoping that the losses, people won't hide things. I know the employees were behind me 100%. I know a lot of people were behind me. And if, if somebody was against me, I usually found a tie to the existing businesses that were down there. Thank you very much. All those links we're going to put up on the website. Thank you. You're going to teach us all how to be a whistleblower. Now we're asking you to bring your voice to this conversation. Our question is this, would you report corrupt activities if it meant losing your job? Sheldon Neal, forgetting for a moment that I'm your boss around here, yes. would you? Yes, uh, well, you know, putting that aside, it raises a very interesting uh, uh, question because I believe that, you know, jobs are very scarce these days. And I think there's a lot of people mm -hmm. who would want to do the right thing, go down that right road. Uh, but when they say, hey, could I lose my job and these are tough economic times, sometimes that, that, that makes it a little bit harder for certain Come people on, to do that right thing. you're sounding like that's not an easy, that's not a natural, that yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna blow the whistle. Uh, you know, we'll talk. Yeah, we will, we will. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> your, your secrets are safe with me. Don't worry. Don't worry. But we want to hear from uh, you at home. Please drop us a line. Connect with us. Email us. Call us. Or also go on social media. Connect with us via Twitter and Facebook. The poll question is located for you there. We want to hear from you. It means so much to us. That question again. Would you report corrupt activities if it meant losing your job? Up next, a legal expert counts the cost of corruption at home and worldwide and explains how it affects you. Very nice.